calorimetry is the study of heat and one common equation that you use for calorimetry is Q equal MC delta T where Q is the heat transferred between the system and the surroundings and it's in units of joules M is the mass in grams C is the specific heat which is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a one gram of a substance one degree and it's a constant but it varies from substance to substance and it's in units of joules per gram degree so for example water has a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree. That means it takes that many joules to raise one gram of water one degree. And delta T is the temperature change. A little delta here means change. And change, whenever you see that Greek letter delta in a math equation, it's always changed defined as the final minus the initial. So we're looking at the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Let's look at a typical calorimetry problem. So you have 25 grams of a metal and you heat it to 200 degrees. You place it in 30 grams of 25 degree water. The temperature of the water goes up to 41 degrees. So given this information we should be able to calculate the specific heat of the metal. In fact, this is a pretty common way to calculate the specific heat of a metal. So if you think about what's happening, you got this hot piece of metal. You put it in the water. And the metal's at 200 degrees water starts off at 25 degrees you put the hot metal in the water the temperature of the water goes up and we see that temperature of the metal it gets cooled off by the water until they both both reach 41 degrees and the reason that this is happening is because the metal is transferring heat right, or releasing heat into the water so you look at the calorimetry equation with respect to the metal we're given the mass we're looking for a, sp a specific heat change in temperature we know but we don't know how much heat's released but if you look at the calorimetry with respect to the water we do know the mass we have the specific heat that's 4.18 and we know the change in temperature So we can calculate the amount of heat transferred to the water. And we assume that the heat gained by the water is equal to the heat lost by the metal. The only difference is as far as the sign goes, their signs would be opposite because 
For the water, it would be an endothermic process, which is usually shown by a positive sign. The metal is releasing the heat, which is an exothermic process, and we usually show that by a negative sign. So again, we can find the heat absorbed by the water that should equal the heat lost by the metal. So once we know Q, then we can find the specific key to that metal. So again, we'll find the Q of the water. Mass is 30 grams. The specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree. The change in temperature is the final temperature of 41 minus the initial temperature of 25. Right, unit wise, notice how the units work out. So that gives us 2006 joules of heat that the water absorbed. So again, it got that heat from the metal. And since the metal is losing that heat, we show that with a negative sign. Its mass is 25 grams. We're looking for C. The change in heat, the final temperature was 41 minus the initial temperature, which is 200. So as we saw for C, that is joules. 2006 joules over 25 grams over 41 minus 200 degrees that gives us 0 0.505 and unit wise that gives us the units for specific heat so joules over gram degree